Welcome back to a very British space program, you find us in orbit. But we're not going to stop there, what sort of country would stop after they'd put one thing into orbit? And we don't really class this, so we better do it properly. Anyway, let's get going. Well, it is the 29th of August 1955 and we have an advanced biological sample return. We're going to continue developing this return program capability. We've got to go to 140 kilometers and go at a speed of over 3000 meters per second and hopefully get back. Um, we're not going to broadcast the fact that we've put something into orbit because we don't really class it as something into orbit. I should just say that the British are very, you know, we're quite secretive about these things and we don't really need everybody knowing that we've got this capability quite yet. We didn't put anything transmitting onto orbit. It was, it ran out of battery power before it completed a full orbit. So we don't really class it, although it did complete a mission for us. So, um, yeah, we've got to get up to 3000 meters per second with this and uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine that this is going to be a problem can you we've got the same craft we've used before we fire it up there we go over the top release the fairings it's it's the frog 1b still and uh, yeah we, we came close this last time because well quite simply we over overused the engine and so we're coming back through we've got a little bit of extra speed but we were going horizontal for most of it so we should slow down you see oh oh ooh, ooh, hello what have we but all right we we blew up the um the little wing sections at the top so they're obviously not that effective we may have to rethink using those um, however the craft's flying sideways on and it's slowing down reasonably well luckily it uh, it doesn't burn its parachutes off and uh, whilst this is going to be a success i'm not entirely sure that it shows the future of our our sort of route to return ability because uh, that that was an uncontrolled tumble and we don't like that so moving on um, our next mission is going to be a crude supersonic flight maintaining 385 meters to 585 meters per second for three minutes at a nice altitude they're all around 11 to 13 kilometers and uh, we're just gonna yeah we're gonna um we're gonna build a new craft but it's not really a new craft we're gonna we're gonna take our uh, our white arrow two uh two b and we're gonna take off its engine and we're gonna stick on two new engines um and these are these are avon engines um not the ones that you will actually get in rp1 these are actually uh, earlier versions so uh, the avon engine actually started development in the early 50s and, and the rp1 ones are normally the later ones but we've got some downgraded ones and you know we're going to try those so change a bit of cowlings around and let's get going so there we are we fire the engines up we did actually do an air launch for this um just because it can take off from the runway but it's just it's quicker um <laughs> in all reality plus this craft is is perfectly weighted and sized to fit in uh, in airdrop mode and it puts us at roughly the right altitude as well which which saves a lot of time and i don't want to really show you videos after videos of videos of climbing in altitude so we hit this um the original Evans, so this is the Mark uh, 101 Avon engines, one of the first ones that came out. They were also referred to as the RA3. Um, they were not used on anything like the English Electric Lightning, it was well before that. Um, but they did not actually have afterburners. Uh, this is one of the things with the model that it gives afterburner power to the top sort of section of the, uh, of the scale. I have scaled back the thrust, so these are significantly less powerful than the normal Avons that you would normally use which I believe are the uh, I can't remember two 260s or something like that I can't remember um, so there we go we we completed the task nice and easily and it, it was an easy sort of flight we, we got up to the speed we required we hold at an altitude for a while um, we actually don't need to run the engines on full power now interestingly if we were using the the more advanced Avons that you get later on we would actually only need one for this because it, it is that much more thrust that it gets um, we've had to j jam two into the back of there which is is interesting I mean, you know sticking two engines on the back of a craft this sort of size uh, the thing that pops into mind would be the TVR2 uh, TSR2 sorry the TSR2 where they had two engines right beside each other and they, they were rammed as close as possible so you had to pair the engines up just to fit anyway we're uh, we're, we're going back through the uh, the uh, the atmosphere and uh, we've 
you know we're, we're doing quite well actually it's a uh, it's a nice easy flight for um for the team uh that's yeah sorry for carol but um it's going to be an, an easy landing i think um the craft is is well used we know this structure the only thing we've done is stick some engine on the back which are quite heavy but doesn't really seem to have affected it. The other thing we did do was, was stick an extra tail fin in just to give it some more control. So we completed that task. Right, so we have finished that and we have another mission we need to do. So we want to get uh, a 65 kilometer X-plane contract. This is not one of the hard ones. We've already gone higher than this in the X-plane. This is just a nice, easy, standard X-plane's contract. We've just had time to go over, so it's worth us doing it. In the uh, pilot seat, we have Matthew West. Obviously, uh, Carol got to fly the uh, the, the Frisk, which was our our previous craft with the engines. Matthew's just going to fly the the normal craft. Um, I should point out the previous craft was called the Frisk because um, uh, Frisk was actually a pilot uh, who flew during the Second World War. For supposedly, he was uh, he flew for the RAF uh, as part of the Canadian force. But um, it turned out he was actually American, so he actually misled everybody into believing he was Canadian, so he could take part in the Second World War in the Battle of Britain. I think that's quite commemorable. Like, oh, memorable, commemorable. Actually, I think it's a wonderful little thing. Um, but just like this craft was sort of portraying itself as something else, trying to make out it's a normal craft. So this is an easy flight for Matthew. He just takes it up there to 65 kilometers. Uh, it's not. A, it's not a hard flight. Um, in reality. We're just doing rocket plane contracts while we wait for rockets and uh, other things to finish. So we're just going to knock them off. The, the 120 days between um, at the moment means that pretty much every 60 days we can do a supersonic flight and then a an X planes flight, an X uh, height flight. Um, however, we're getting quite used to it and these, these crafts are doing quite well. Um, I'm not sure if this designs philosophy is going to be the future for us because um first of all it's uh i don't think it's really sort of expandable it, i don't think it's capable of re-entry from sort of suborbital flight um i think we've we've fixed some of the stability with the frisk regarding the tail but i think putting two tail planes on a suborbital craft a little bit excessive but i'm sure matthew knows what's going on doesn't he so we're just coming through the atmosphere and nothing's wrong perfectly fine no problems whatsoever what what yeah yeah um i think we've reached our limit because we've just lost the nose um you can play it back and have a look at it i think it may be an overheating thing it might be a bit of a jarring thing i'm not entirely sure but we lost our nose so that's uh that's a modification to this craft i don't actually know if the nose is required to be honest with you although we are heating up that cockpit again and i wonder whether the nose has been shielding it a little bit i don't know um i will not be replacing the, the nose on this craft because this craft at the moment it has no future we may reuse it maybe once more without the nose see how it goes because it might inform us a little bit about future design but in reality it's pretty much it's a dead end right now um so we're just using it for the the, the cash monies and uh, and so forth we're not getting any science we're not getting anything from it apart from money 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 and it's free so i'm not going to put any money into it or time into rebuilding it we're just gonna fly as is until we can't do it anymore so we come in and this is a quite a fast landing well it's slowed down but we, we actually tried to stay just above the ground for it so that's that now the next one we're going to build something a little different. So we've seen already that um, the future of the uh, the the White Arrow is uh, the White Arrow Two. I think is probably is is over. I don't I don't see a White Arrow Three a White Arrow Three in the horizon. So we're going to build something else, and this is um, it's going to be a combination of of ideas of what we've done before. It's basically going to be um, the White Signal 2. It's going to take the idea of the big Delta wing from the original White Signal 1, that little craft with the, the engines at the back, and it's going to combine it with uh, da -da -da -da, the Avro 730. So the Avro, Avro came out with a craft that they, they felt would be really good for um, high altitude fa fast travel called the Avro 730. Um, it was proposed, and, and this is pretty much the design. It had a, uh, a very odd sort of set of canards at the front, which were square. And I'm going to keep them square because I quite like that. It's a little quirky, and it's quite, I think it says, it's quite British. 
I don't think I can think of any other craft that have got square front canards with delta wings at the back. Normally you've got sort of a delta canard. Um, the other thing about it, and you'll see there, I'm putting the cockpit inside. It's got no windows. The the proposal was that uh, from Avro that there would be a, uh, it was designed for a bombing actually was one of the ideas they had for it. Um, but the idea was there would be a periscope that they would use for takeoff and landing and then they'd fly by by instruments for the rest of it to and from destination. Um, so I think that gives us a little bit of a go for this. So you can see there we just, uh, we've put all that, we've coloured it by the way, I, I didn't make you watch that. And we're actually going to put a little command pod there uh, for science, it's a little science pod. I know I don't have to but I want to use something to attach my film camera to and just oh, sling it under there. So that means I can replace the film ca camera easily. So. That is the White Arrow 2A. Um, and so we're going to launch it somewhere a little special. Yeah, welcome to Spade Adam. This is not in Australia. This is in the UK, in the north of England, um, basically on the border of Northumberland and Cumbria. And uh, it is the largest by area, or it was at the time, RAF base in the in the country. And so we're going to use it. Um, I've had to mod this in. You can see, by the way, I've sped this up so it does look stupidly fast. But anyway, it's a very sort of pointy craft. The engine's roaring away there. I might have to numb that down a bit. Um, we're going to use uh, Spade Adam for some of our flights from our plane contracts to give us a bit of a break from Australia. Um, also, it allows us to get a bit of science as well. This is just a shakedown craft test, basically. I want to make sure it can fly and land a bit. Um, it is a it is a big craft uh, compared to what we've flown before. Um, we're going to do a little jaunt around, collect some science. We've got Kim Jarvis in here. She's going to be uh, she's going to be stationed at, at Spade Adam from now on, um, and uh, she's going to do all the flights from Spade Adam. Uh, the other three are going to stay down in Australia and she's just going to look after this so at the moment we've only got this craft up here so she'll be focusing on this you can see we're just we're playing around with it seeing stability um i did have a go with the uh mech jeb sort of autopilot yeah i'm not sure if i like it or not um i have also had a play around with uh, atmospheric autopilot which i do and don't like as well the fly-by-wire aspect quite like that um, i should point out that the white signal 2a is also nicknamed the duke um, which you can go and Google it. Go and Google Duke and um, test pilots and see what you come up with. So you can comment down below because I always tell you what it is. But we've decided to call it Duke after a famous British test pilot. So uh, have a look. Anyway, you can see we've got that, that film canister underneath with its science unit. And because we've not been over sort of what is, I believe this is considered forest. I'm not entirely sure if the UK has that many forests anymore to be considered purely forest. Um, we're just going to do some science. We're also running the engines at what I would consider sort of uh, maximum attack. And again, this is using those those Avon 10, Mark 101 engines. We will probably upgrade those as we get more tech. So I've actually teched them out and put them on the tech tree so that as we go through time, there's actually going to be, I think there's three or four variants that we can actually swap in and out uh, to try and represent the idea of development. Um, I think the tech tree in, in RP-1 doesn't really show the British sort of jet engine development. You've got the Derwent, which was uh, uh, mediocre, but anyway. So we're going to come in for a landing and see what happens. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be a good one. Um, well, I was anyway. I know the answer to this. You, you don't. Um, this craft has a lot of wing. But it's very thin wing, so it was it was interesting to try and decide just how fast I thought I could I would have to land. Um, I could have come back to the runway and spent my time in it. I'm going to be honest with you, I um I just didn't really want to spend all the time doing it. Plus, landing on on the grass is actually quite quite an interesting experience. Now, I in my head allow this because Spade Adam is so large. As long as I land somewhere near it, it's pretty much likely to be runway field. So let's move on. So we have another mission, and this is going to be a uh, another uh, craft with uh, another um, red frog craft, um, and it's uh, this is by the way this is the 29th of February 1956, and the idea is here is that we're actually going to go higher and faster. So we've actually got a two stage craft now. Uh, we have to think i think take it to about 4000 meters per second and we have to go to the normal height so we've got to go suborbital but we've got to get faster um i got a little clever on this one because the the wording of it basically suggests when you read it 
the craft initially when it achieves its set speed has to have the um, the pier load alongside the actual uh, the canister but I thought it doesn't say that it has to bring all of it down it just says it has to bring the biological capsule down so I thought we'll get rid of that it makes it lighter and that means that we're actually going to be able to uh, complete the task without having to use heat shields and things like that and I thought that's a brilliant idea so you'll see there we got to the maximum speed and then we let go we've got the little canister tucked away in there we've got a parachute in there as well we've got our little wings on the top which actually are probably not that good but mm, whatever and um and we've got our avionics on the bottom which is curved so that hopefully it uh, it heads that way yes wonderful so at this point i'm thinking i'm feeling quite positive we we lost all of the the fins and everything um come down and um yeah i'm thinking this lands i get the reward because i don't see any problems i don't see any problems with that there's ticks everywhere it's completed all of the requirements hasn't it yeah no it uh it seems that my understanding of english and the way it was written may be slightly different so um yeah you can guess didn't pass Mhm. Mm look there we go i'm confused so with that we're going to have to do that next time so i hope you enjoyed that so far we had a bit of, a lot of plane flights and uh, some other stuff going on with rockets but next time we're going to get back to it and might even go back into orbit and tell people about it this time until next time have a great one